Let's get to the iPhone. We uh, had a really nice thing happen recently. We won the uh, J.D. Powers Customer Satisfaction Award for smartphones for 2010. But it's not just for 2010 because we've actually won it for the last three years in a row. So we've won it 2008, 9, and 10. A developer preview of OS 4, iPhone OS 4, the next major release of the iPhone operating system. There's over 100 new user features. And again, here's just a few of them. Users can now create playlists on their phone. We've added a 5x digital zoom in the camera app. You know how you can tap to focus when you're taking a still picture? You can now tap to focus on video. Every iPhone, every, every photo taken on the iPhone is geotagged. And we've added places in the photo app now so you can see where they were taken. You can change the home screen wallpaper. It's been a huge request that we've gotten. Uh, you can use Bluetooth keyboards. And uh, we've added a spell checker, which is really nice. If you misspell a word, it'll underline it. You just tap it, and it'll give you the rec what it thinks might, uh, what you might have wanted to type. You can uh, gift apps. This has been a big request, too. So you can buy an app and gift it to somebody right from your phone. So again, these are just a few of the end user features, over 100 of them, in iPhone OS 4. Now, of those, we're going to talk about seven today. We call them tentpole features. Uh, we don't have time to talk about all 100, but we're going to talk about seven of them today. So let's get into it. Let's start off with the first one, which is uh, probably going to be the biggest one, and that is multitasking. <laughs> now, we weren't the first to this party, but we're going to be the best, just like cut and paste. Other people had cut and paste before we did, but everybody, it's, I think, widely believed that we just nailed it uh, with the way we did it, and it's much better than, than any other implementation. I think we'll, people will think the same about multitasking. Because it's really easy to implement multitasking in a way that really drains battery life. These apps start running in the background, and there goes your battery. And it's really easy to implement it in a way that reduces the performance of the foreground app and makes your phone feel really sluggish. So if you, if you don't do it just right, your phone's going to feel sluggish and your battery life's going to go way down. And people have experienced that a lot. We figured out how to implement multitasking for third-party apps. Just slide to unlock. You can see I've got uh, my wallpaper up there. And uh, I'm going to just go ahead and, and launch mail right off the dock there. And uh, so here I am in mail. I'm going to look at a mail message. And uh, this mail message has a, uh, has a URL to a website. So I'm going to go to that website. And I just click on it. And I'm taken to the browser, right? So far, this is what we do every day on an iPhone. And here I am at this uh, Mount Kilimanjaro website. Now I want to go back to reading my mail. I'm done looking at this website. What do I do? I could navigate back to the home screen and then click on mail again. But rather than that, I can just double click the home button. And the window raises up, and it shows me all the apps that are running. These are all the apps that are running. And I want to go back to mail. And I go right back to where I left it. I want to go back to that web page. There I am, right back at the web page. Very simple. Very, very simple. So now what I want to do is I want to go to eBay uh, to check on an auction I'm following. I can just tap on it. And again, I go right to where I left off in the apps. So here I am on eBay where I left off. I'm checking my auction. And uh, now I want to go play a game. Let me go play Tap Tap Revenge. And Tap Tap Revenge gives me a countdown. It keeps me where I was, but it gives me a countdown of, uh... all right, I'm not winning here. So I'm, again, the game stops. And I can say, great, let me go back and look at mail here. Check mail out. I've been playing a game for a while. Oops, that was the website. Sorry. Let's go to mail. There's mail right there. OK, I don't have any new mail that I need to look at. So let me go back to my game. 
And again, it's going to take me right back where I left off. Three, two, one. Pretty cool, huh? And again, I can go home anytime I want just by clicking the home button again. And boom, I'm home. All right, makes sense? So uh, let's say I'm on the train. I'm listening to my personalized radio station. Until now, that's all I'd be able to do. Uh, but with new, uh, the, the iPhone OS 4, I can now head over to Safari, catch up on my newspaper reading. I'm going to browse over to the New York Times website and peruse some of the latest headlines. Notice the performance of the browser, even with Pandora running in the background. I see the conductor coming. Let me lock the phone and put it in my pocket for a second. Pandora keeps playing. And I can now control Pandora from the lock screen. Just a quick double tap on the home button and up pop the controls. Let me skip this song. I've heard that song somewhere before. <laughs> I can't remember the name of that artist, so let me go back to, to uh, Pandora. Oh yeah, Matt Costa. I like this song. Let me buy it. I'll go buy it from iTunes. Notice that Pandora keeps playing. 25% of the 120 million hours that we stream every day are streamed over an iPhone. So we're already sending a ton of people to iTunes. Just imagine what will happen when this thing goes live. So I could spend my whole train ride like this. I could read my email, I could browse the web, I could catch up with my calendar, and all the while, my personal soundtrack just keeps spinning in the background, just like it was always meant to be. Thanks very much. With iPhone OS 4, when I leave the app, I go into background, yet I'm still able to receive calls. Let's say I want to go to one of my favorite games. I just double click the home button, bring up the multitasking UI, and go straight to it. Now, even though I'm in a, another application, I still look online to my Skype contacts because the OS is maintaining a network connection between my iPhone and the Skype cloud. Oh look, Aaron's calling. Now, even in another app, if someone tries to call me, I receive a notification and I can answer it with just one tap. Hey Aaron, are you there? Hey David, how's it going? Pretty good, can you just hang on one second? Yeah, sure. Great. Now, the notification you just saw was really simple to implement. Just a few dozen lines of code, and we can play our own custom sound. Uh, by the way, we're piping the sound from this iPhone through the AV system here, kind of like a, a giant speakerphone. This is a, a real Skype call. Hey, Aaron, you there? Yep, I am. Hey, I was wondering if you're interested in getting some dinner tonight. Yeah, sure. I'll just go into an app and uh, see if I can find some places. Okay. Okay, so you can see at the top of the screen, there's a red status bar. This shows that the Skype call is still in progress, even though the Skype app is no longer in foreground. I'm just looking up some places now, Aaron. Um, how about we go to Abacus? That sounds great. Actually, I always wanted to try that. Cool. Okay, I'll send you the details in a few minutes. I'm just with some folks right now. Okay, sounds good. I'll see you later. Great. Bye-bye. So Bye -bye. now I can choose to go to another application, or I can just put the phone in my pocket. In either case, the app will be in background, and I can still receive calls. Now, with iPhone OS 4, Skype is even more convenient and useful for everyone that depends on it every day worldwide. A while to complete an operation, like Flickr. If you start uploading photos to Flickr, it takes a little while to do that. And until now, if you left the application while it was uploading the photos, it would stop. But with task completion, Flickr can continue to upload those photos in the background, even after you've switched away from it or to another application. Our last service is fast app switching. Now this is probably the easiest for developers to adopt and probably the most important. Fast app switching is what allows an application, when you're running it and switch away, to store all of its state and move into a quiescent state in the background so it's not using any CPU at all. So let's say you go from tap tap to mail, and then when you go back to that game or whatever the application is, it's instantly exactly where you left it. There's no need to launch the application. There's no need to restore the state, restore where you are in the game. Everything 
has been preserved and you're right back where you were.